It's Kyle here, and today I have the pleasure of reviewing Displaced by Cindy Lawson. And yes, it's the Cindy that's a member of We Read Books. Um, for some of the newer viewers of this channel, might not be aware that Cindy is an author. This is actually the second book in her series, The Last of the Fallen Trilogy. The first book was Wingless, which I also had the pleasure of reviewing on this channel. I'll post the link to that, um, that review in the description box below. Wingless is a great book. Uh, if you haven't read this book yet, uh, go to the link, watch the review, um, buy the book, find a way to read it. Um, it's a great book. I think you'll really enjoy it. So Wingless definitely gets my recommendation. I'm not going to bother reviewing it again since I've already reviewed it. Since Displaced is the second book in the series, this is the point where I'm going to stop you. If you haven't read Wingless yet and you don't want that book spoiled for you, Stop watching this video now, go watch the um, Wingless review, read that book. If you've read Wingless or you don't really care about spoilers, you continue watching this review. So I'll give you a quick little three second pause. After that, it's your own fault if you get something spoiled. Alright, that probably gives you enough time. Uh, displays picks off right where Wingless um, ended. If um, you need a little refresher, um, Charlie uh, had his life saved by um, Tane. He remains on Earth. Tane, Gaius, and the um, scepter they came to Earth to look and locate had all went to heaven, or as it's known in these books, Fismuth. And then when Tane gets there, um, she's shocked to see Gaius dead. Um, everybody's mad at her for being corrupted on Earth and actually saving a human's life and she strikes out and stabs the scepter with a knife. So uh, this place picks up right where that left off. Uh, Tane's being banished from Fismuth for her actions. Um, she's been put on the other side of the wall where um, everybody that's banished in the feeders uh, are living. That's basically seen as a, a death sentence. So a large part of the book through Tane is her experiences of uh, being basically exiled and fighting for her life. That part of the book I find very interesting because it introduces an um, extremely interesting character. I'm not even going to bother pronouncing his name because I know I'll butcher it badly, but basically there's this legendary angel who would also had the power of their prestigious ones who had been banished in the past. And he became almost something of a boogeyman type figure that it was almost hard to believe his real his powers were so great, and Teen happens to stumble upon him in this um, banishment area, and she partners up with him, and he is an extremely interesting character. He's one of these characters in um, literature or TV or movie you'll see where he comes off crazy, but you're not sure if he's just acting crazy or if he really is crazy. He's very interesting, very funny, he's a very insightful character. I really enjoyed his addition to the book. So that's where Teen is in the book, is, you know, kind of partner with this guy as they're trying to find their way and trying to survive. Charlie has something drastically different. He's really struggling on Earth to adjust to life without Teen. He'd really fallen deeply in love for her, and he's, he's trying to make his way on Earth without her, but he just is having a hard time putting her um, behind him. And then, um, suddenly one day when he's kind of trying to figure out, trying to figure out exactly what happened with Tane. He is um, taken to Fismuth and made into an angel, which angels in this world exist as basically the, the servants slash workers for the prestigious ones. Basically this is Charlie's punishment for corrupting Tane. But, and you tell in the book they actually anticipate Charlie to die. They don't think he'll survive his transformation into an angel. But he does survive his transformation as an angel. In fact, he, in, he embraces it because he never really fit in on Earth and he really almost uses this, I guess, as a new chance to fit in. And of course, he likes the idea that he might get to see Tane again. It's basically a reversal of roles in the first book. The first book, Tane's thrown into Earth and kind of Charlie is showing her the way of what Earth is like. This place, you know, you're reversing the roles. Charlie's now thrown into heaven slash Bismuth, and the other angels are having to explain to him the size, show him the roles, and he has to adjust to that. And he really flourishes in this new role. Um, 
and he begins to try to figure out how he can get to Tane. He finds out she's been banished, and then it becomes how can Charlie get to Tane in the area she's been banished. And that really sets up the points, the key plot points of the book. So I really won't go any farther into describing the plot because I think I'll get into some spoiler alerts. But some things I do want to mention that I think Sydney did an excellent job with. Um, once again, the new character that she introduced, the um, exiled angel, is a great character, added some humor, some unpredictability, um, wonderful addition to the book. If you go back and watch my first um, video review of Wingless, one of the few things that I critiqued about it was you did get the viewpoint of the angels in the story. This is definitely not the case in this book. You get a lot of the viewpoints from the angels. You get to see what they feel like basically existing as virtual slaves in heaven. Really enjoyed that aspect, getting a new um, side of the story. Another part of the book I think Sydney did a great job. Early on in the book she does a great job of using flashbacks from Charlie and Teen to kind of fill in some of the missing elements that we didn't know about from the first book, kind of filling in some background stories that um, were left unanswered in the first book. She really does a great job of using flashbacks to fill in those little missing points. We learn key pieces of knowledge that really helps advance the storyline. And then um, she does an excellent job of setting up action for the third book in this um, trilogy. Um, it's clear about how she's driving the storyline. The third book is going to be a very action-packed story. War is on the horizon, and she does an excellent job throughout the book of setting up this action-packed third book that I'm really looking forward to. So if you've read Wingless and you enjoyed it, I think you'll really enjoy Displaced. If for some reason you're watching this review and you haven't read Wingless yet, go back, read Wingless, and then get this book. Um, I'll put a, a link in the description box below where you can get this book. I highly recommend it. I know several other members of We Read Books have read Cindy's book. Um, Kaisa did, Holly did, I know. I'm not sure if anybody else did, but I know those two did. They both loved the first book. I don't know if they've had a chance to read the second one yet. But I'm sure all three of us would very much recommend you wing, read Wingless and um, definitely give this place a chance. Cindy Lawson is a very talented young author, and uh, I get the book community's job to support talented young authors anytime we can spot them. So. Hope you enjoyed my review. I'll see you the next time. And Sydney, I'm looking forward to your third book in this series. I can't wait for it. See you later.